Hey everybody, in this video I wanted to do a um, earnings report on CrowdStrike. Now I'm not too familiar with this company but it is up after hours significantly about $8. So that's about 6.5%. So I wanted to take a closer look at their financials and see if this company is actually worth a shit. Now um, let's go ahead and look at their press release. Now, if I'm just scrolling down a little bit right here um, fourth quarter financial 2023 highlights so right here they're going to save me some calculations so revenue total revenue was 637.4 million which is a 48 percent increase compared to 431 million in the fourth quarter of fiscal 2022 so right there that is a pretty amazing increase in revenue but you always want to pay attention to the operating income or loss because sometimes you see something bad like what I'm seeing right here. So um, income or loss from operations. So GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles, loss for from operations was 61.5 million compared to 23.5 million in the fourth quarter. So um, what does that mean? That basically means that they tripled their losses. So not, not necessarily a good thing. Now, obviously, you know, they're going to give you their adjusted numbers, you know, their non-GAAP income. So right here, they say non-GAAP income was uh, 95.6 million compared to 80.4 million. Now, you always got to take this with a grain of salt because non-GAAP income, you know, it adds things like uh, depreciation. It adds things like um, stock-based compensation, which is the main one that I don't like them to add. Now, um... You know, let's just go ahead and go straight to the income statement. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Let's see, income statement, where are you? Uh, there we go. That looks like an income statement. So um, keep in mind, these numbers are in thousands, except earnings per share. Now, um, right here, we get the three months. So this is the quarter data for 2023 and 2022 for the quarter ending January 31st. Now, right here, this is the full year data for the um, year ending January 31st. Now, if we're looking at revenue, you know, like they said in the highlights, this is a 48% increase. So that's pretty awesome. Now, um, let's look at cost of revenue. So if we're looking at all of our cost, at the end of the day, we have gross profit of 461.7 million. So right there, that's, that's a good sign. Now, um, here's where the whammy happens. So if we're looking at this, um, operating expenses, Sales and marketing, R&D, um, general and admin. So all of this together, you know, that gives us a loss of $523 million, which then puts us at a operational loss of $61.5 million. Now, if we're looking at the full year data for 2023, right here, um, we can see that this number was $190 million. So it's more than in 2022. But um, now we see something a little bit funny because now I'm looking at net loss. So net loss, I'm seeing that this number is somehow lower. So um, basically what that means is between here and between there, something happened. So let's go ahead and um, just dig into that. So interest expense, let's look at this line item. So um, interest expense, uh, it's relatively flat. Interest income, let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, wow. So um, $27 million here. So if you're making $27 million in interest income, that means that you're investing in something that is giving you interest. So right here, they are taking advantage of the high yield that um, a lot of uh, basically debt securities are giving you right now. So um, yeah, they made about 27 million in interest, but for the full year of 2023, they made about $52.5 million in interest. So this interest income is basically carrying their ass. So as you can see here, this net loss is less than in 2022. But, you know, what happens if you add that back? If you add that back, you know, it's pretty much the same situation. Same with when you add that back. So, you know, the net loss amount, it's really about the same amount. So, um, you know, that, that's pretty interesting to see right there. So, obviously, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing because interest income, that is investing. That's not necessarily a part of operations. You want to see their loss from operations. You want to see this number go down. That, that would be a good sign. And eventually, you would want to see this number go positive. But clearly, that is not the case. 
Now, um, let's go ahead and look at uh, weightage average shares, basic and diluted. This number is going up, as you guys can see. This went up about, um, let's see, about um, about 5.4 million shares or something. Yeah, about 5.4 million shares. So uh, not necessarily a good thing. That means that dilution is occurring. And um, as you guys can see, net loss per share, uh, this number increased. But for the full year, this number decreased. And a lot of that is contributed to this um, interest income. Let's go ahead, let's scroll down a little bit. Um, next, I wanna look for the balance sheet. Balance sheet is pretty all telling for companies like this. So um, cash and cash equivalents, okay, this number went up. That's a good sign. Short-term investments, okay, they're investing in something. That's a good thing. Um, and as you guys saw, you know, they're making interest income. So whatever they're investing in, you know, must be a good thing. Um, accounts receivable. Let's see, uh, this number basically doubled. All right. So total current assets. End of the day, you know, um, 3.64 billion. Okay. And then right here, 2.57 billion. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at their current liabilities. So current liabilities, uh, this number went up as you guys can see and if we're just looking at the ratio the current ratio so um you know that's about 3.64 billion that's about 2.1 billion so let's just do some very quick math so i'm going to do 3.6 i'm going to divide that by 2.1 okay what do we get we get about uh 1.7 times current assets to uh current liabilities so that's not bad that essentially means that they do have some sort of cushion and as you guys can see, you know, they are growing their current assets. So that's a good thing. And um, let's see, what do we want to look at next? So uh, let's see, let's see. I want to look at equity. Equity is always important. So equity is essentially um, assets minus liabilities. So if we're looking at total stockholders equity, this number basically went up 50%. So that's a really good sign. But, 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 but. This is the important thing. Your equity can go up if you do um, if you do a um, offering. So if you do a stock offering, your equity can go up. That's because your cash is going up. But the way that you want to see, okay, is this a good thing? Is you want to compare that to the amount of shares outstanding. So you're going to do a calculation. You're going to do book value per share. So equity and book value are the same thing. So um, right here, I have book value. So book value is essentially... Um, all your assets minus your liability. So that's that's equity right there. So let's go ahead and get the equity amount and let's divide it by the shares outstanding. So um, 1037643. Now we're going to scroll up just a little bit, go back to that income statement, and we're going to look for that per share amount. So right here we can see that. So we're going to divide that by 229662. All right, so about $4.52. So go ahead and remember that number because I might actually forget it. So $4.52, keep a mental note. Let's scroll back down. Let's look at the equity for uh, 2023. All right, so equity is um, that number right there, 1487. Four, three, four. We're gonna divide that by the shares outstanding, and I think I maybe scrolled a little bit too much. Nope, right there. So divide that by two thirty-five. Oh two seven. Oh wow, six dollars and thirty-three cents. So here we see that book value per share actually increased. So that right there, that's that's a good thing. That's a good sign. That essentially means that um, you know whatever money that they're making is outpacing the dilution. So that's a very, very good sign right there. But keep in mind that their gap earnings per share is negative and this stock is trading at $133.4. So maybe there is a valuation issue here. So I do think that this year, does look a little bit better for CrowdStrike because as we saw, you know, we calculated it here, 
that their book value per share went up quite substantially. So to me, that's a good sign. But I think that there's a serious valuation issue. Now, um, let's just go ahead and look at this further. All right. So um, let's go ahead and look at cash flow next, because cash flow is very important. All right, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. So here we go. So um, basically what cash flow does is that it takes the net loss from gap and then it basically reconciles this on a cash basis. So anything that's not necessarily um, a subtractor to cash is added back in. So things like depreciation, amortization, they're not necessarily a cash expense. It's, essential, it's essentially just allocating the expense of um, purchasing, you know, like a building or something or purchasing equipment over a period of time. So that's essentially what depreciation is. So um, right back here, you know, we're adding this back in and uh, things like stock-based compensation, you know, that's uh, dilution, but it's not necessarily an expense, like a cash expense. Obviously, it's not a good thing for investors, though. As you guys can see, this is a whopping $526.5 million. So that obviously is not a good sign. But as we saw earlier, you know, their equity um, did increase and you know their book value per share did increase as well. So what this means is that they're essentially making good use of this dilution here and they're basically using it efficiently enough to increase their book value per share, which is a pretty good thing. But like I said, you know, remember this company does not make any positive gap earnings and it's pretty darn expensive. So in a economic environment like this, would I want to own something like CrowdStrike? Uh, not really. So um, I do want to emphasize that point right there. Now um, let's just go ahead and reconcile all of this. So after we do all of this reconciliation, it says net cash provided from operating activities. Okay, it's a whopping $941 million, which is um, a substantial amount increase from 2022. So let's go ahead and calculate the percentage increase. So we're going to do um, 941.007 minus 574.784 equals, and then we're going to divide that by um, 574.784, multiply that by 100. Okay, so that's a 63.71% increase in um, cash from operating activity. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign right there. All right, all right. So um, what else do we want to look at? Uh, purchase of property and equipment. Let's go ahead and look at that as well. So um, essentially, if we want to look at free cash flow, all we got to do is get this amount, subtract it from that. Or I guess in this case, you would add it because that's a negative number. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's calculate free cash flow. That's 941.007 minus uh, 235019. So that essentially means that they have free cash flow of about uh, $706 million. So that, that's a good sign. That essentially means that, you know, this company is not really going to go bankrupt or anything, but they are going to continue to uh, dilute your ass. Um, as you guys can see here from stock-based compensation. So yeah, you're going to continue to get diluted. And does this company pay dividends? Uh, I don't really know, but I could figure that out real quick. So if a company does pay dividends, you'll know right away because it'll show up in the financing activities. So let's see, um, blah, 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 something, something, something. Um, yeah, no dividends. So you're basically just um, holding this, you're getting diluted, and uh, they're reporting negative earnings per share. So honestly, my opinion, not that great, but I do want to emphasize that, you know, this entire year was pretty good for CrowdStrike. Now, um, let's just go ahead and look at the last five years of the price action. So um, yeah, the chart, it doesn't look too good to me either. That's a head and shoulder. That's a massive head and shoulder. So does it have more selling to do? Uh, maybe, probably, most likely. Um, is it overvalued? Uh, probably, maybe, uh, most likely. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, that, that says it all. In 2020, this was worth about $32. It went all the way up to $300. Now it's back to uh, $125. But if we're looking after hours, $132.30. So that's going to produce a massive gap right there. Uh, let's just do some very quick charting. Just some very obvious levels that we want to look at. Obviously, that level right there, that's about um, 154.58. So there is some pretty strong resistance right there. And then um, this low right there, let's go ahead and tag that. That's about um, 130 right there. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, in the morning we open up, we have that gap, and then we revert right back down to this level right there. Maybe we even close the gap. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is an overreaction. But, um, you know, we did see a massive sell-off today in the market. So uh, maybe CrowdStrike, you know, maybe it just gives up all its gains. Who knows? But um, all in all, I do think that this um, stock is overpriced. And um, I will admit that this was a good report. Now, um, let's go ahead and look at some other things. So um, I do like using macro trends. This does give me a good outlook on just a uh, company over many years. Because obviously, if I just look at one financial statement, that's just going to give me a snapshot of basically the prior year and the current year. So if I'm looking at earnings per share for CrowdStrike, I can see right here this chart. So uh, let's go ahead and look at quarterly earnings. So negative, 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 positive. Okay, so uh, maybe something was up there. Maybe they had like a um, other income item that wasn't necessarily part of their um, operating income. So right here we do see a little anomaly, but as you guys can see, the trend is negative earnings. So negative earnings, negative earnings, but um. As of late, I guess it's slightly less negative. Um, right back here, let's see, what year was that? 2018, you know, this was very negative earnings. Uh, 2022, less negative. So, you know, we do see a nice little trend here. You know, it's getting less negative. So um, let's go ahead and look at shares outstanding. All right, so um, shares outstanding. Uh, as we can see, this number is increasing. So you guys can see that it pretty significantly increased. So yeah, we are seeing um, shares outstanding increase, but um, right here, you know, it's kind of leveling off. It's really just um, growing by probably um, stock-based compensation here. I don't think there's any massive shelf offerings or anything like that going on here. Um, let's go ahead and look at revenue. All right, so if we're looking at revenue, yeah, this is consistently increasing. So as you guys can see, this is pretty much, um, you know, if you were to draw a curve right here, it would pretty much look exponential. So um, yeah, revenue growth is pretty amazing here. And right here, you know, we could see a year over year quarterly growth. So right here, this gives us percentages. So, um, you know, this number is, however, going down a little bit, as you guys can see. So, um, all in all, you know, my thoughts, hey, you know what, revenue is growing. Hey, you know what, um, earnings per share is becoming a little bit less negative. But as we saw, you know, that was primarily due to that interest income. And when we did look at equity and we um, calculated book value per share, that number did go up. So they are making good use of that stock-based compensation. And if we do see this type of momentum going on in the future, you know, I would think that eventually, you know, this company might post positive earnings, but I still think that they're pretty far away from it. And is this a company that I would want to own during a time where we see a lot of economic distress, where we see interest rates constantly increasing, where we see a lot of inflation and where we could see demand subside? Uh, not necessarily. I, I would not want to own this company. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this analysis and I hope you guys all have a good one.